Practice Test 2. Listening, Part 1. You will hear some short conversations. You will hear each conversation twice. Choose the correct answer to complete each conversation. Conversation 1. Do you have a job? Yeah, I work for a few hours in a shop after school. Do you still do all your homework? Conversation 1. Do you have a job? Yeah, I work for a few hours in a shop after school. Do you still do all your homework? Conversation 2. The person sharing my flat wants to move out. Oh dear, so are you looking for someone to move in? Well, I can't pay the rent on my own. Conversation 2 The person sharing my flat wants to move out. Oh dear, so are you looking for someone to move in? Well, I can't pay the rent on my own. Conversation 3 Can you help me with this photocopying machine? Sure. What's the problem? Is there any way to produce double-sided copies? Conversation 3 Can you help me with this photocopying machine? Sure. What's the problem? Is there any way to produce double-sided copies? Conversation 4 I'm here for the conference. Welcome. Do you need a ticket or do you have one already? I was hoping I could get one now. Conversation 4 I'm here for the conference. Welcome. Do you need a ticket or do you have one already? I was hoping I could get one now. Conversation 5 I really can't decide between these two courses. Well, which university is better as far as you can see? They're so different. It's hard to choose between them. Conversation 5 I really can't decide between these two courses. Well, which university is better as far as you can see? They're so different. It's hard to choose between them. Conversation 6 You've been in Britain a while. Do I have to tell the authorities when I change accommodation? No, that's no longer required. Oh, right. I was talking to someone the other day who thought you still had to do it. Conversation 6 You've been in Britain a while. Do I have to tell the authorities when I change accommodation? No, that's no longer required. Oh, right. I was talking to someone the other day who thought you still had to do it. Conversation 7 Excuse me, miss. I'm afraid the library will be closing in 10 minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. I completely lost track of time. That's okay. I could see you were focused on your reading. Conversation 7 Excuse me, miss. I'm afraid the library will be closing in 10 minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. I completely lost track of time. That's okay. I could see you were focused on your reading. That is the end of part 1. Listening, part two. You will hear five conversations. Listen to the conversations and answer the questions. Choose the correct answer. You will hear each conversation twice. Conversation one. You hear two friends talking about a job offer.
So, are you going to take the job? I'm not sure. I'm worried that they're not paying enough for the position of manager. But they said they'd review the salary after one year, didn't they? Well, yes, but then there's my holiday. I haven't actually booked it yet, but I'd plan to take the last two weeks in August. And that's just after the job is supposed to start. Oh, right. You could ask them if you could start later at the beginning of September. That's an idea. But then there's the question of working at the weekend. Is that required? They said sometimes, which I wouldn't mind. But it depends what that means. Unfortunately, I have to work every Saturday morning. That's why I want to leave. I know. I'd hate to do that. Conversation 1 So, are you going to take the job? I'm not sure. I'm worried that they're not paying enough for the position of manager. But they said they'd review the salary after one year, didn't they? Well, yes, but then there's my holiday. I haven't actually booked it yet, but I'd plan to take the last two weeks in August. And that's just after the job is supposed to start. Oh, right. You could ask them if you could start later at the beginning of September. That's an idea. But then there's the question of working at the weekend. Is that required? They said sometimes, which I wouldn't mind. But it depends what that means. Unfortunately, I have to work every Saturday morning. That's why I want to leave. I know. I'd hate to do that. Conversation 2 You hear two people talking about organising a meal for office colleagues. We'd better send an email out soon telling people the date of the meal or some of them might not be free on that day. True. People get booked up on Fridays quite a long time in advance. But we can't send out invitations until we know where we're going. Well, we can talk about that now because I've found out what the majority of people want. How many have said they'd like to come? Um, seven. Well, nine with you and me. Three said definitely no and one's a maybe. And most want Spanish food if possible. I'll phone a couple of places now and see if they have space for that Friday. I just hope it'll be okay this year. Well, it can't be as bad as last year, can it? Slow service, horrible food. Oh, don't remind me. I wish we hadn't agreed to organise it again this year. Me too. Conversation 2 We'd better send an email out soon telling people the date of the meal or some of them might not be free on that day. True. People get booked up on Fridays quite a long time in advance. But we can't send out invitations until we know where we're going. Well, we can talk about that now because I've found out what the majority of people want. How many have said they'd like to come? Um, seven. Well, nine with you and me. Three said definitely no and one's a maybe. And most want Spanish food if possible. I'll phone a couple of places now and see if they have space for that Friday. I just hope it'll be okay this year. Well, it can't be as bad as last year, can it? Slow service, horrible food. Oh, don't remind me. I wish we hadn't agreed to organise it again this year. Me too. Conversation 3 You hear a female tutor talking to a male student. I'm sure you must be a little disappointed in the mark I gave you for your last essay. Not really. I know it wasn't very good. The structure was poor. The presentation was bad. Well, perhaps. Although I wasn't too worried about that because there was a much more serious issue. Oh, I'm not sure. Tom, it's clear from your essay that you did not do the reading research which I put at the end of the lecture handout. That's a basic part of studying on this course. I thought I could just work from my lecture notes. Each lecture is the starting point, not the complete information about a topic. The reading research will help you answer the essay questions fully. I didn't realize that. I thought you wanted our opinion on the essay question. 
That part's fine, but it's only the final few paragraphs of the essay. You've got to get the main body right, with details of the topic and different opinions of experts. Okay, but could I send you an outline of my next essay before I start writing? Sure, good idea. Conversation 3 I'm sure you must be a little disappointed in the mark I gave you for your last essay. Not really. I know it wasn't very good. The structure was poor. The presentation was bad. Well, perhaps. Although I wasn't too worried about that because there was a much more serious issue. Oh, I'm not sure. Tom, it's clear from your essay that you did not do the reading research which I put at the end of the lecture handout. That's a basic part of studying on this course. I thought I could just work from my lecture notes. Each lecture is the starting point, not the complete information about a topic. The reading research will help you answer the essay questions fully. I didn't realize that. I thought you wanted our opinion on the essay question. That part's fine, but it's only the final few paragraphs of the essay. You've got to get the main body right, with details of the topic and different opinions of experts. Okay, but... Could I send you an outline of my next essay before I start writing? Sure. Good idea. Conversation 4 You hear two students talking about a presentation. So, how shall we present our research to the rest of the students? In a slideshow, it's the most obvious, although it takes ages to make the slides. I was thinking more of a live experiment, with students predicting the results and then carrying it out in groups. But we're only allowed 30 minutes to present our research, including questions and answers at the end. True. OK, so a quick slideshow to provide the background and then the experiment. But we only do it for all the audience to see. Oh, that's good. Then we have to provide follow-up work for homework. We could put up a reading list on the slideshow at the very end, all the stuff we referred to in our research. But then we'd have to send everyone the slideshow file, unless we turn the whole slideshow into a series of handouts. That's too much printing. It'll take hours and cost a lot. So let's just print off the reading list slide as a handout. Cool. Conversation 4 So, how shall we present our research to the rest of the students? In a slideshow, it's the most obvious, although it takes ages to make the slides. I was thinking more of a live experiment, with students predicting the results and then carrying it out in groups. But we're only allowed 30 minutes to present our research, including questions and answers at the end. True. OK, so a quick slideshow to provide the background and then the experiment. But we only do it for all the audience to see. Oh, that's good. Then we have to provide follow-up work for homework. We could put up a reading list on the slideshow at the very end, all the stuff we referred to in our research. But then we'd have to send everyone the slideshow file, unless we turn the whole slideshow into a series of handouts. That's too much printing. It'll take hours and cost a lot. So let's just print off the reading list slide as a handout. Cool. Conversation 5 you hear a drama teacher called Emily talking to a new colleague. It was always natural for me to end up being a teacher, but you were a professional actor, weren't you, Emily? Well, I went to a drama school, but it didn't just offer professional acting training. In the last year, we followed a teacher training course too. Did you always want to be a drama teacher then? No, I chose that school because it was close to my home. After completing the whole three years, I joined a theatre group which mainly performed in schools and I loved the reactions of the kids. <laughs> so much better than the average theatre audience. So you switched from acting to teaching? That's it. I saw an advert for a drama teacher in an inner city school and I thought... Why not work with kids all the time? What do you see as the role of drama in the school curriculum? Are you looking for the next Hollywood child star? Not at all, and I'm certainly not trying to make them love Shakespeare's plays, although it's always a bonus when they do. 
I see the job as getting children to be able to socialize naturally, especially the ones who find it difficult to be themselves in public. Conversation 5 It was always natural for me to end up being a teacher, but you were a professional actor, weren't you, Emily? Well, I went to a drama school, but it didn't just offer professional acting training. In the last year, we followed a teacher training course too. Did you always want to be a drama teacher then? No, I chose that school because it was close to my home. After completing the whole three years, I joined a theatre group which mainly performed in schools, and I loved the reactions of the kids. (laughs) So much better than the average theatre audience. So you switched from acting to teaching? That's it. I saw an advert for a drama teacher in an inner city school and I thought, why not work with kids all the time? What do you see as the role of drama in the school curriculum? Are you looking for the next Hollywood child star? Not at all, and I'm certainly not trying to make them love Shakespeare's plays, although it's always a bonus when they do. I see the job as getting children to be able to socialise naturally, especially the ones who find it difficult to be themselves in public. That is the end of part two. Listening, part three. You will hear a manager from a city tour company giving some training to new employees. Complete the information on the notepad. Write short answers of one to three words. You will hear the person twice. Hi everybody. I wanted to welcome all of you to our training session for new tour guides. I hope you're all looking forward to introducing tourists to the wonders of our city. Please take notes now, then do your own research on each area which I highlight today. Remember, as tour guides, you'll be travelling on our open-top buses. Tourists can get off and on at each stop. Your talk will help them decide where to spend their time. We have several routes. Blue, green, red and yellow. They each pass many important places. Make sure you know the history of each place. Keep in mind that tourists who come on our tours are eager to learn. Your knowledge, but even more your enthusiasm, will ensure that they have a good experience. Let's start with an area that's on all the routes, Central Square. It's famous for its exciting atmosphere day and night. It was originally built in the 19th century. If you're doing the Saturday tour, encourage tourists to visit the outdoor market stalls, which sell everything from clothes to food to handmade gifts. It's also a good place to stop for a drink with its many cafes and restaurants. Also on the routes is the old city centre, which is contained within walls. Its ancient streets and well-preserved buildings take us back to the city's origins. Point out the magnificent concert hall and the picturesque old pubs, some of which go back to the 15th century. Visitors must see Green Park. This area of calm in the centre of our city offers an escape from the noise and crowds. There is a charming lake, wonderful gardens and impressive statues. By the way, Visitors like to know about the origins of the park, so do some research on that. Next, the Art Museum has a vast collection of classical and modern works. These are from both local and international artists. There are also temporary exhibitions. This week, for example, the museum features artists from the 19th century. The History Museum offers a journey through time from the people who lived here centuries ago to recent developments. One particularly enjoyable feature for children is the collection of old toys. Now, we don't have a uniform for our tour guides, so you can wear your own clothes, with one exception. Please do not come to work in trainers. Finally, 
If you have any problems with your work schedule, the person to see is Mr. Marks. That's M-A-R-X, not M-A-R-K-S. Oh, and one more thing. Tourists love interesting facts and personal stories. They really remember them. So if you want to make your talks really memorable, talk to Mrs. Hughes. That's H-U-G-H-E-S in the main office. She knows everything about this city. Hi everybody. I wanted to welcome all of you to our training session for new tour guides. I hope you're all looking forward to introducing tourists to the wonders of our city. Please take notes now, then do your own research on each area which I highlight today. Remember, as tour guides, you'll be travelling on our open-top buses. Tourists can get off and on at each stop. Your talk will help them decide where to spend their time. We have several routes. Blue, green, red and yellow. They each pass many important places. Make sure you know the history of each place. Keep in mind that tourists who come on our tours are eager to learn. Your knowledge, but even more your enthusiasm, will ensure that they have a good experience. Let's start with an area that's on all the routes, Central Square. It's famous for its exciting atmosphere day and night. It was originally built in the 19th century. If you're doing the Saturday tour, encourage tourists to visit the outdoor market stalls, which sell everything from clothes to food to handmade gifts. It's also a good place to stop for a drink with its many cafes and restaurants. Also on the routes is the old city centre, which is contained within walls. Its ancient streets and well-preserved buildings take us back to the city's origins. Point out the magnificent concert hall and the picturesque old pubs, some of which go back to the 15th century. Visitors must see Green Park. This area of calm in the centre of our city offers an escape from the noise and crowds. There is a charming lake, wonderful gardens and impressive statues. By the way, Visitors like to know about the origins of the park, so do some research on that. Next, the Art Museum has a vast collection of classical and modern works. These are from both local and international artists. There are also temporary exhibitions. This week, for example, the museum features artists from the 19th century. The History Museum offers a journey through time from the people who lived here centuries ago to recent developments. One particularly enjoyable feature for children is the collection of old toys. Now, we don't have a uniform for our tour guides, so you can wear your own clothes, with one exception. Please do not come to work in trainers. Finally, if you have any problems with your work schedule, the person to see is Mr. Marks. That's M-A-R-X, not M-A-R-K-S. Oh, and one more thing. Tourists love interesting facts and personal stories. They really remember them. So if you want to make your talks really memorable, talk to Mrs. Hughes. That's H-U-G-H-E-S in the main office. She knows everything about this city. That is the end of part three. Listening, part four. You will hear a radio interview with Julia Sanchez, a city planner, about a survey which she conducted. You will hear the interview twice. Choose the correct answers. You have one minute to read through the questions below.
This morning I'm speaking to a special guest, Julia Sanchez, who's a city planner for the City Council. Welcome, Julia. Thank you. It's great to be here. Now, Julia, you recently conducted a survey for the council. Did you send out questionnaires or do it face-to-face in the streets or what? I used a website. It was the most efficient way. It enabled us to ask a large number of questions and we didn't have to type all the responses in ourselves. What was the point of the survey? Were you showing local people the plans you and the council members had made? Not exactly. I felt it was important to get the views of residents before I started talking to council members about spending city development money. I covered all the things which people have complained about to the council in recent months, with the most important areas first, in case people didn't complete the survey. And did people respond well? We received a tremendous response, with over 10,000 participants sharing their thoughts and suggestions. Firstly, many residents expressed their frustration with long commute times, whether by car or bus. People have to be able to get into the centre from all the suburbs. Absolutely, and there isn't a problem with roads into the centre. The city developed over the centuries with main roads coming in from all directions. If you can actually drive along them. Exactly. There are plenty of buses, but they move too slowly. We need to reduce commuting time in the rush hour, but obviously we don't want to raise speed limits. I can see the problem. So let's talk about the future. What is the council actually going to be able to do to address these demands? What are your recommendations as a city planner? Well, it's very clear from the survey what the majority of people want, but the council definitely can't provide everything requested, even when the request itself is relatively simple. I suppose there's just not enough money. Actually, the council's well funded for the next few years, but many of the requests can only be met if agreement can be reached with different groups of people. New green spaces with play areas involve a lot of discussions with health and safety, risk management and parking authorities, local environmentalists. Sounds complicated. Are there any specific initiatives? We're starting with the easiest things, the ones that simply involve improving existing services, parking for example. The cost, you mean? There's no shortage of spaces, but parking in the city centre costs more than some shop workers earn in the day. Well, that's not quite true, but people did complain a lot about parking. The leader of the council is going to talk to the companies which own the car parks and ask them for discounted rates for anyone working in the city. I advised her not to allow more on-street parking because that just creates another problem. She agreed. Going back to the request for more green spaces. That's a difficult one, as I said. We can't knock down a housing estate to create a park, obviously. There's no land left in the city that hasn't been built on, so we have to change the use of existing areas. Old factory sites look like good options, but sometimes they're an environmental nightmare. Because of what the factory owners dispose of on the sites? Exactly. After the buildings have been knocked down, the ground has to be tested for all kinds of pollution and in many cases cleaned thoroughly before the land can be put to any new use. But that's our only choice. Thank you, Julia. Good luck with the projects. Thank you for inviting me. This morning I'm speaking to a special guest, Julia Sanchez, who's a city planner for the City Council. Welcome, Julia. Thank you. It's great to be here. Now, Julia, you recently conducted a survey for the council. Did you send out questionnaires or do it face-to-face in the streets or what? I used a website. It was the most efficient way. It enabled us to ask a large number of questions and we didn't have to type all the responses in ourselves. What was the point of the survey? Were you showing local people the plans you and the council members had made? Not exactly. I felt it was important to get the views of residents before I started talking to council members about spending city development money. I covered all the things which people have complained about to the council in recent months, with the most important areas first, in case people didn't complete the survey. And did people respond well? We received a tremendous response, with over 10,000 participants sharing their thoughts and suggestions. 
Firstly, many residents express their frustration with long commute times, whether by car or bus. People have to be able to get into the centre from all the suburbs. Absolutely, and there isn't a problem with roads into the centre. The city developed over the centuries with main roads coming in from all directions. If you can actually drive along them. Exactly. There are plenty of buses, but they move too slowly. We need to reduce commuting time in the rush hour, but obviously we don't want to raise speed limits. I can see the problem. So let's talk about the future. What is the council actually going to be able to do to address these demands? What are your recommendations as a city planner? Well, it's very clear from the survey what the majority of people want, but the council definitely can't provide everything requested, even when the request itself is relatively simple. I suppose there's just not enough money. Actually, the council's well funded for the next few years, but many of the requests can only be met if agreement can be reached with different groups of people. New green spaces with play areas involve a lot of discussions with health and safety, risk management and parking authorities, local environmentalists. Sounds complicated. Are there any specific initiatives? We're starting with the easiest things, the ones that simply involve improving existing services, parking for example. The cost, you mean? There's no shortage of spaces, but parking in the city centre costs more than some shop workers earn in the day. Well, that's not quite true, but people did complain a lot about parking. The leader of the council is going to talk to the companies which own the car parks and ask them for discounted rates for anyone working in the city. I advised her not to allow more on-street parking because that just creates another problem. She agreed. Going back to the request for more green spaces. That's a difficult one, as I said. We can't knock down a housing estate to create a park, obviously. There's no land left in the city that hasn't been built on, so we have to change the use of existing areas. Old factory sites look like good options, but sometimes they're an environmental nightmare. Because of what the factory owners dispose of on the sites? Exactly. After the buildings have been knocked down, the ground has to be tested for all kinds of pollution and in many cases cleaned thoroughly before the land can be put to any new use. But that's our only choice. Thank you, Julia. Good luck with the projects. Thank you for inviting me. That is the end of part four.